Hi, I'm Casey from Retroactive Arcade. I am going to talk today a little bit about LED buttons. So um, I get a lot of questions a lot of times about how to hook them up, what voltage is the LED itself, um, you know, what should I use for wiring, harnesses, that kind of a thing. Um, now we're kind of going the way of putting inserts instead of getting printed buttons. Um, the printed ones are just come with the inserts pre uh, pre-installed so I'm going to show you how to put an insert actually inside of an LED button uh, we find it that it's a lot easier for us to sell the insert and then the button separately then you can put whatever you want in any button that you get um, so that it's good that way uh, maybe you know a button scratched or something's damaged on the printed one you get and now you can't do anything with it I guess in the end you can pop out the little insert and put it in the other one so I'm going to show you how to get at that so you'll be able to do it so first things first I'm going to go over just some really quick stuff so uh, feel free to fast forward through this if you are already knowledgeable about LED buttons except for the actual inserts themselves but basically I'm going to give you the anatomy of it. So your LED buttons is, are going to come with a couple different things here. These ones are the chrome LEDs and then you've also got your regular LEDs. They all come the same way. Um, the difference between the chrome and the non-chrome is the, the illuminescence of the non-chrome chrome ones tend to f not really fade out, but they, they kind of give you a blanket kind of a glow. Um, it, it, it kind of makes it not look completely round or whatever. It just, it just kind of gives a nicer glow. Like a, it's, it's a little dull, almost like a black light feel on a blue button. Um, these chrome ones, they're, they're more like a super bright, so all the uh, light is focused out of just the lens on the top. So it won't allow it to come off of the bezel itself as well, so it doesn't dissolve in any way. Um, this one here is very sharp, very clear, uh, gives an elegant look to your machine. Um, doesn't always look the best if you're just using like a bright yellow or galaxian green T-mold, and then you use these kind of buttons, it doesn't uh, necessarily fit so there's a couple of different you know you get chrome on your on your machine you want to go with LEDs this looks really nice gives that added pop okay so then it also comes with a spacer that fits as a cup on the top there I always take these spacers uh, when we're using them in the shop and I chuck them they're garbage if you want to use them you can put them on but basically it's going to give you that spacer it's going to give you that lift off of your um, off of your console so this thing is going to sit you know six seven millimeters higher than your console and it won't have that nice bevel sliding edge it'll it'll have like a hard edge on it um so they're raised up i guess it's okay if you've got a really thin or, or sort of, yeah a really thin control panel and you don't want to you know spend the extra you know three seconds to give it a you know the nut to tighten on there then you've got your nut obviously and then you've got your lamp holder and you've got your LED now one thing that I should say about the LED we'll zoom in on it here um, is the LED has two sides to it obviously positive and negative now it matters what way you um, wire this thing up okay so you'll see on the sides here once you're all zoomed in um, that there's a single wire and then the other one's a single wire but it's a double wrap okay now you can see the difference of the gauge of that wire um, the gauge of the wire is based off of its polarity so you've got your thick wire on the one side that's your ground the wrap side uh, with the thin wire that's your positive now all the LEDs that we sell it's not all the ones that are out there on the planet but these ones that come in that are super bright and things like that they are 12 volt only you can run 5 volt to them, but it will kill the longevity of your LED. So if you've connected it with 5 volt and it works and you want to, you know, uh, sit there and say, oh, uh, contest what I just said, you know, wait a year or less, and these LEDs are all going to burn out. Um, if you run them at 12 volt, you're going to get a nice bright LED, you're going to get your full longevity and life out of them, and that type of a thing. Sometimes they do die in a month or whatever. They're all made in, they're all mass produced uh, overseas. And uh, you can't guarantee that, you know, hundreds and thousands of these LEDs aren't defective, so it does happen. Uh, I've had them die in a day, uh, but it's just because of a defective nature. Now, it doesn't matter what way you actually plug this LED into the lamp holder itself. You just have to make note and do them all the same if you want to make your life easy. Okay, so I always, I always say 
uh, that the single strand wire, my ground wire, the thick one, I always put it on the long side of the lamp holder itself. So I call this the long side, that's where your, uh, or the mount side, uh, that's where your uh, micro switch is going to mount to. Okay, so if you look inside, your micro switch, it has two holes, in, or you have two holes in the micro switch, you have two little prongs in your lamp holder like you do a regular push button it's just obviously separate and comes out and then you just pop it in good to go there's your micro switch popped into your lamp holder now if you look at this you got your regular micro switch prongs okay so you got your ground um, and then this is your um, <clears throat> your regular prong here and then this one here allows it to be one this one's open that one, or that one's open this one's closed so every time you hit it, it opens it up. The other one just stays open. Um, sorry, I don't know why I had to think about that for a while. I've been doing it for a long time. Uh, but basically you take your lamp holder and then you have your two little prongs on the button itself. So you slide it through the center, put it on the prongs and just give it a little twist. Um, sometimes it's hard if it's not mounted in the actual cabinet, but you just put it in a twist. You should hear a little click uh, there's some ones that uh, we get in once in a while that are of a white white kind of lamp holder on them. With that white lamp holder, they seem to fit a little more loose, um, but that's just the way it is. So give it a little twist, they stick in, untwist, take it out. Um, so I'll go over the wiring in this in a second, but I want to get into um, how to actually put, take these the rest of these buttons apart for the inserts. Now, the inserts on these ones, usually come with a blue like so or the the same color as whatever the lens is so if you see what I did there there's two little prongs for the white there those are the things that when you push the button they they're little plungers that plunge down to the top of your micro switch on this little button here okay so that all this lamp holder and everything else it helps that push that micro switch line up to these little plungers so this plunger here to get the button out you squeeze the two plungers together and you push them up into the button itself. Now you can see that the button pops right out. Spring fell on the floor. But basically what happens is, is now you've got this and it's just a little, it's like a pressure cap top here. Uh, you just pop it, it'll come off nicely. Hear the click. Now you've got another few pieces. So there's your blue insert, your blue top, and you've got your uh, your housing for the insert or insert in the lamp and then there's a spring that goes up in there that has fallen on the floor um, so basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a insert in it now these are the inserts that we sell they're about a buck a piece or 70 cents or something like that a piece um, which is a better deal than you buying a printed button that I have to sell for five bucks versus selling this for 250 and then 60 70 cents for this you save yourself a buck buck 25 per button so no matter what you look at it it is a better deal so um, <clears throat> take this it's a clear sticker it's laser printed on so it's on, on a clear backing As you can see your clear backing now what you do is you just put your deco right on top get it in there all nice everybody's good now some of these have them and some don't this one here specifically has little notches so that this graphic or this insert won't spin around 360 degrees and mess with everything and blah 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 blah. Now the way we're doing it right now is backwards for me. I usually install the buttons first because I want all the micro switches facing a certain direction so they can get a very nice tight wiring inside underneath my, my control panel. This here for this purpose, this is what you do, you put it all together, we do it this way. But with these notches, the reason being that I put the button in is because I can mount it any which way I want, but this goes in a very specific way. It can only fit in one of two ways, so you can only spin it 180 degrees after you do this. Um, so I like to do this <clears throat> after the button itself is installed. I pop it out and I let it sit in there on the control panel like this. And then I'll pop it back down after this is taken out. I put the insert in, then I put the decal on that insert so that it's in the exact position that I want it to be because with those notches that'll make it, that will force it to stay in that position. Then you just pop it on and 
Normally it'll pop up with a spring, but I dropped it on the floor and it would take too much time and I don't see you guys want me to walk around and grab it. So basically, there you go. Your insert is in there. Everybody's happy. Um, after you do all that, mount your button or have it mounted before you do it. Put in your insert, give it a twist. Everybody's good. Now your button's sitting there, ready to go. Okay? Now I'm not going to do the insert part again for the other illuminated button, but with this illuminated button, well, we'll go through the process really fast. Take your little insert. You don't want that sitting at that height above your control panel um, unless you're running a VLT or something. But for an arcade, it just doesn't seem to want to work. So we take that out and throw that away. Take the nut. Get that out of our way too. All right? Take our LED, pop it in, put the ground side on the mount side of your button. Micro switch, you can put those on at any time. I think we got these backwards, that's why they're giving me grief. Pop them in, give it a twist. All good to go. Take it, give it a twist. There you go, you heard the click. Happy day. Now we got our buttons. So now I'm going to show you how to wire them. Okay, so micro switches. If you don't know how to wire, uh, wire a micro switch, I'm just going to show it really fast. I'll just hook it up. So you take your positive wire or whatever of it. Let's just do these colors because they're together. Um, so let's say um, <clears throat> uh, blue in this case is going to be our ground. So ground always goes on the bottom. So that's our ground button. Then we want to go our closed um, prong for our color. So this takes us to, um, this gives us a button number A goes to the jam harness or <clears throat> player button one on an iPack or something like that or <clears throat> even your uh, zero delay or your uh, Zinmo button number one that type of thing so that goes there this is going to be for uh, ground is going to be say your daisy chain so you can take a daisy chain um, I'll take them off we'll put these both up so you'll daisy chain ground daisy chain the ground So that's going to be one that goes all the way around to all your other buttons, like so. These are just for the micro switches. These are a control thing. So your micro switches are set up normally the way they normally would be. Now, this is the fun part, which makes it a little more complicated. I do all this stuff first for these ones before I even start doing the LED wiring. These LED harnesses make life so much easier. If you actually want to crimp them and do all that stuff and have the... Uh, hard pioneered experience of making the harness yourself and doing all that because you're too cheap to buy a five dollar thing you know fine all so be it be super happy to do it um, enjoy uh, I'll never do it again since I've gone to these harnesses I would buy these in a heartbeat so now when I said before you want to use the mounting side as your ground it doesn't matter you don't have to do the mounting side as your ground but when I did that now I automatically know that, that's, that this is my ground side at any given time. So I use the daisy chain and I go ground. Go on here as ground as well. Now I know where it is, so it makes life super easy. Positive, other side. Boom. Okay, so now this is what you're going to be looking at. Now you multiply that by, you know, anywhere from 15 to 28 buttons you can see how fast that's going to be um, getting really, really, really bunged up in your in your uh, control panel. Now these will go off to arcade power supply, your computer power supply, whatever you want. Yes, I know this cable is red and that signifies 5 volt in Canada and North America, uh, but it's actually a 12 volt and this will carry a 12 volt current. It's rated for it as well, yes. We also sell a 30 point um, <clears throat> LED harness that's uh, yellow and black um, but basically so you go to your ground on your arcade power supply computer power supply and then you tie into your 12 volt for that as well as soon as you do that and that power supply turns on all your LEDs on the top will turn on they'll all glow your color and everybody's happy so you have to remember with these LEDs um, they are there's since it's blue you have a blue tint on your button right you also have a blue insert and then you also have a blue LED, so they're called super brights. It's the point to do this. Uh, RGB LEDs, 
Um, basically what they do is, is they hook up like a regular button and then it has a little PCB insert that sits inside the button and then there's four little wires that come out. So you got ground, red, green, blue. And then you'd have to like run those and extend them all to all your controller uh, for your like uh, 64 LED controller from Ultimark or wherever and then you can set it all up for LED blinky and do all that kind of good stuff but for these ones these are dedicated colors they don't change color um, it's pretty static that way and you get the super bright so hopefully I know there's a little jumble of wires here but hopefully you kind of get a good idea of how those wires all connect uh, on there and actually it looks complicated but it's not so uh, if you ever feel like taking on a project and doing all this stuff uh, by all means you know there's lots of help out there there's a lot of videos out there uh, like us and uh, we're only a phone call or an email away we respond to everybody that contacts us as best we can uh, as soon as possible usually within 24 hours so uh, yeah feel free to uh, contact us and let us know how your project's going and if uh, you have any other um, you know suggestions of videos and stuff that you would like us to do feel free to put, post those as well and we'll get to them when we can thank you very much and have a good day